Something else is kicking in. I've seen emotion here. <laughs> What's going on? Um, it's just me right now with that I'm unemployed and just graduated a few months ago. And so it's practically impossible where I live right now to find a job in my. But you're still a 10 out of 10 person. Damn. You're just in the video game map of somewhere where there's no jobs. <laughs> but look at you. You're crushing it. So what if you're not employed? Well, it gave me something I don't have a, I haven't had at all. Fuck that, you're, you're unemployed, embrace it. I'm only saying this because I was also unemployed. I was, I was homeless a couple times in my life. But here's the thing, you'll see that, how old are you? I'm 24. 24. The older you'll get, you'll see this. And this is something I've personally seen throughout the years. I've been uh, teaching since 2010, so 13 years plus at this point. And prior to that, I, w I had a ton of minimum wage jobs, homeless in between, making like eight bucks an hour in LA. It was terrible. Living among cockroaches, for real. They'd lay eggs in my computer in the USB ports, and they'd come out and stuff because of the heat. Um, <laughs> that was for real. Now, even from the time where I started coaching and building my own brand, there were people back in, say, 2010 who I'd look up to who were a ahead of me. Yet, in the long run, they crashed and burned and I surpassed them. Then there were people I thought I was ahead of. I'm like, oh, look, at, look at me. And then they passed me. Meaning there is no ahead or behind. We're all on this journey. And even if you audit the different areas of life, you might see some people ahead financially and then boom, they get hit with cancer or some health thing. Who's really ahead? There is no ahead. There's just shit and we're all just dealing with it. We're making the best of this crazy roller coaster that is life. Like a video game. What you're saying is, hey, I went to look for some gold and I went in this, these mountains and there's no gold. This shitty character, and you're throwing the controller. No, you're a great player and a great character. You're just in the area where there's no gold. Doesn't say anything about your future. Literally, two years from now, you could be crushing it and I could be begging in the streets. Please give me a five kroner, five kroner, please. <laughs> Literally, like, it's not impossible. And I'm saying this in a humble way because I know the ups and downs. I've also known like what it's like to early on make a lot of money and then lose it. Guess what, in 2014, I was like $250,000 in debt. That's a fuck ton. Literally, it was so crazy that even as I was like, well, what's another extra 10,000 in debt? Once you're that low in debt, it's like, it's, it's insane. And then building up from that, you go through these phases. And that's the thing, it's like you can't try to find all this safety in the external, it has to be drawn from within. It's like, this life's gonna throw everything at you. Famous saying, life's gonna keep lifing. All of you here, all of us, you, me, we're gonna go through crazy tragedies between now and the day we die. Unless you die sooner, you will all experience it. Like say we were hypothetically, the universe came and said, you're all gonna live till you're 80 years old. You might be cheering. <laughs> But what does that also mean? You're all going to witness many people you know die and terrible things happen between now and 80. That's life. Yet our ego gets in the way. Where do I stand compared to others? Am I ahead? Am I behind? What about in the money game? Do I here, here? Who knows? Maybe right now, I'm here, you're here. Who knows what happens two, three years from now? Maybe two, three years from now, you're here. Like I said, I'm for coroner. Then two, three years later, you're down here and I'm back up here and it's this till we die. But in the end, it doesn't matter because we all die. Can you take any of this with you? No. So we're all fighting over these things that really don't matter. Who's better? Who has more points? Yet in the end, we get the same medal. Death. Here, here you go. <laughs> I have 100 points, death. I have 10 points, death. Right? So a lot of this work is really unwiring these delusions and illusions and lies that we just bought into. Like you right now, no job, so what? That's like me saying... Here, this is, this is a job, okay? The phone is a job. <laughs> Got a job. Oh no, I'm a lesser person. I'm not enough. That, that, I need that. The, jo the phone, the job. Am I a better person holding the phone? Or is it the same me holding the phone? Same me. Am I a better person with a job? 
No, it's the same me with a job without a job. Same here. Why are you saying a job enhances you? Why are you saying my other, my soulmate is a job? <laughs> That's what you're saying. I'm just a half and the other half is a job. <laughs> whole. No, you're still whole before or after. Same with looks. I'm unhealthy. Health is my soulmate. <laughs> Screw that. It's the same you. And guess what? For any of you who are attached to your looks, you're going to get old. You think you hang on to your looks as you're old? Someone's like, well, maybe Botox. <laughs> Give that some time. You're not going to hang on to your looks. <laughs> so you're setting yourself up for future failure. Anything out here in the physical is at the mercy of change, and it will change. Enjoy it. Just like a video game, hey, enjoy the different levels, but in the end, you can't find yourself in that. Because then you're also giving your power away to that and you become a slave to that. And just one last example, this is me back in 2006. Switzerland, very shy, I discovered this whole self-help world. And I decided to work on my social skills. And the way I went about it is, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go put myself out there, talk to people, but I felt so insecure about myself and the way I looked that I could only go out and interact with people looking a certain way. Meaning, I had one pair of jeans that I'd wear and I would iron it before going out. One shirt, one jacket, and that's it. And I could only go out and say hi to people, say hi to strangers, put myself out there if I looked that way. If I were to meet the same person the next day, not looking that way, I'd be too scared because I found all my confidence in looking this way. Now, can you imagine how that would trap me? Like I said, see the person the next day, it's like, I'm not looking the same way. Couldn't hang out for more than a night out with anyone because what if they got to know me? What if they saw me in the morning casual? I don't have the perfect hair and gel and shirt and da da da. Screw that. You become a slave to it. Versus, hey, this is me, take it or leave it. And a final thing, this also means be willing to get rejected for who you are. There's no avoiding that. And there's nothing wrong with that. You should be. Authenticity polarizes. What are you thinking right now when it comes to you and your self-worth? I'm thinking that my mom is kind of a blogger in my head. Not because she's a bad person, just that I feel like she's very determined that I have to do things her way. Mm -hmm. And I have been pulling away a lot lately. Um, have experienced new things because I moved away four years ago. Mm -hmm. It was hard in the beginning, especially, especially because she basically wrote to me every day and I was annoyed by it every single day. Mm. Um, she doesn't do it anymore because I told her. Uh, but there are still things she does that annoys me and has always annoyed me. Mm -hmm. And I tried taking it as it comes again. Still difficult because she's a pretty determined woman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Couple things just before we dive deeper on this yeah. for all of you. Number one, and this is very important with the relationship you have with your parents or whoever raised you. Because that as a child, we tend to project perfection on them. Meaning, how dare they ever make any mistake? Yet, as you grow older, the older you get, if you audit at what age your parents had you, and then say you pass that age, you realize how little you know about yourself in the world. And you're like, wait a minute. They were my age. How did they do this? And you realize they're just human and they probably knew very little and just did the best they could with what they knew and who they were at the time. Yet as a child, we project like, you should know all mistakes. You're my parent. What do you mean mistakes? That doesn't exist. You're my parent. Be perfect or else I will resent you till I die. <laughs> and I will pass that resentment on to my children and their children and they will all hate you. <laughs> That's what we think as a child. Now, as you grow up, it, it, again, it's kind of taking the, the pedestal glasses off. And it means, okay, well, they're just human. How old were they when they had me? How old am I? 
did I figure everything about life? No. And maybe trying to see things from their perspective. Now, it doesn't mean that your mom did things perfectly. It doesn't mean that she's not did things wrong or she's like, hey, it's all your fault, not your mom. But step one is place yourself in their shoes and say, okay, well, can I see where they're coming from? It's the good old seek first to understand, then to be understood. Whoever hurt you, same thing. Oh, that person, well, put yourself in their shoes. Where are they coming from? What are they thinking? What's going on in their mind? Doesn't mean accept or for, like, be like, oh, that's great, or approve, but it's seeking that understanding which can eliminate a lot of the charge. Now, from there, then it's thinking about yourself saying, okay, this is obviously affecting me, and as you said, stop writing me. And this is a catchy one. Because I've seen and I've coached people, a client comes to mind who grew up in Los Angeles and I'm coaching him, this is on Skype and he's in his 40s and he lived in Ukraine. He, he, he moved now, but he lived in Ukraine and he's in his 40s and he moved to Ukraine, why? To do work in movies. He loved filming and doing movies and his parents were always against it. They're always like, hey, you got to be a lawyer, you got to be a doctor, look at your brother, blah, 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 and just putting that standard on him. And he's like, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going to be me and moved across the world. That's why he moved there. Now, even though physically he moved across the globe, he was still run by his parents and specifically his mother. And it's been years. So what does it say? It doesn't matter where you move. It doesn't matter if you say, hey, stop messaging me. If you're still in reaction to her, she's still controlling you. Key for all of you. Oh yeah, move across the world. You change the physical. Energetically, emotionally, subconsciously, you're still run by it. Whatever you're trying to escape or fight against, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to show them you're giving them power and they're running you. Which is also why when you hear me say forgiveness doesn't mean approving, doesn't mean accepting, it means freeing yourself, that's the key. When you actually forgive and you're no longer triggered by that person, they no longer have this hold on you. So for you, the question and the perspective to sink into is, can you forgive your mom completely? Now, there might be sensations that surface saying, no, and you don't want to BS those or try to change them, but by doing specific letting go meditations, you can start releasing this charge. So eventually when you hear this question, can you forgive her, nothing gets triggered. And that's when you're free. Until then, everything you do is in reaction. Even if right now you're like, okay, uh, you know, my mom said this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to live my life, like say, I'm going to change how I look, I'm going to get a good job, I'm going to do this. Everything's still in reaction to her. Do you see me now, mom? Look at me. You're still run by her. In a way. I would actually say I'm kind of a rebel to my mom. A rebel is nothing but a slave. I know. To whatever it is they're rebelling against. But I have always hated that people tell me, you look like your mom. I can agree with people. I have seen pictures from a younger age. Yes, I look yeah. like my mom. Why do you think that is? Genetics. Well, yes, <laughs> but why do you hate it? Because it triggers you. I hate it because I don't like everything about my mom and I don't want to be seen like her because that's not traits I want to own. Interesting. So that's the definition too of being triggered. Meaning, like I said, forgiving your mom doesn't mean approving of what she did or didn't do. You can look back and say, hey, you know what? I don't approve of that, I don't like that. It's like, say you saw right now um, someone go into jail who's a school shooter. Are you going to look at that person and be like, they have two hands, me too. Ah! Like get triggered and pissed off? No. Well, why is that happening with your mom? <laughs> oh, we, kinda, we have the same genetics and hands and face as my mom. Ah! It's probably about more personal to me because I don't want to be. Well, what does it say about you? And that's the thing. What, what about her triggers you so much that you don't even want to look like her? Mm. Let's do this. What's your mom's name? Uh, Lisbeth. Lisbeth. Role play. You ready? Yeah. Deep breath. Let's just say I'm your mom right now. 
What do you want to tell me? I don't <coughs> like that you try to control me so much. Why? Because I want to live my life and want to make my decisions knowing that it's my decisions, not just yours, not just you sitting on the back seat of the car and telling me where to go. Well, what's stopping you? That you don't really let go. You just keep pushing. Why is that stopping you? I'm not physically holding you. You're free. You can do what you want. Yeah. Well, I have the feeling that if I want to really let go of you, I have to either shut you out of my life or you have to stop acting like my mom anymore. Why can't you still follow your dreams and be you? Because it feels like I'm not allowed to grow up and do my thing. How? But that's on you, not on me. Yeah, it is. I still have a feeling that you have a finger in everything I do. Even though I make a lot of decisions on my own. Hmm. Okay. Deep breath back. So two things there. And we kind of hit on the two polar extremes. Is one, it can actually at times, don't rush into this, think it through, but it can be at times beneficial to temporarily cut people out of your life. Temporarily. So if you sense like the pull is too whole, like too strong, it can be helpful. But on the flip side, it's also important to understand and analyze, like, wait a minute. Sure, the pull can be hard, but am I not strong enough to still act authentically and execute my will regardless? You could also view it as a good test. Like here's your mom and perhaps she is imposing. But by you succumbing to it, you're saying that her will of you is more important and more powerful than your will of yourself. And that's another thing to analyze. Now, there's no right or wrong answer. You might be like, you know what? I just need some time apart. Great, go for it. But overall, you should reach a point where even if your parents like, hey, this is what I want from you, you're like, nah. It doesn't get in the way. Even if your mom's like, hey, I want this from you. And say that's not what you want. You should be able to look at her and say, in a non-attacking, defensive, reactive way, no, nah, that's not where I want to go. Because what you're saying is, your, your will, what you want of me is always getting in the way. It's controlling me. How can she control you? Unless she's physically there or financially at play, she can't really control you. And even financially, you have to ask yourself, well, what's more important? Getting a few extra bucks from her or my own well-being? And that's part of the cutting of the invisible umbilical cord, which is scary too, because it also means taking responsibility. You're now your own adult. There's no longer your mom looking out for you. Your own person. That's what you gotta communicate. And it's been authentically just congruent with take it or leave it. Meaning if she's like, well, screw this, all good. If she's like, okay, I'm still here, I understand. All good too. But now there's no longer mommy to come save you, no. to cry to, to complain to. There's also no longer mommy to blame for your problems. Because that's another big one that keeps them there. It's my fucking parents. It's fucking mom. Okay, she's gone. It's me. <laughs> you have no, no one to point the finger to. Which is also scary. It's no joke. That is very scary. So you got to really analyze those different forces and thoughts and rationalizations within. But ultimately, what you're saying, although valid, I'm not saying it's not valid, viewed from another perspective is saying, I'm at the mercy of her will versus are you? That's like me saying, hey, um, I don't think you should look to the crowd. Don't look at the crowd. You can't look at the crowd. Can you physically look at the crowd? Yeah. <gasps> you disobeyed! <laughs> it's the same thing. But mommy said this. Mommy wrote me, like, so what? You're free. 
You're your own, you're your own being. You're your own adult now. Then there's people, well, might that hurt her? Well, maybe, but that's on her to accept it. That's the thing is every child, it's like, yes, you have, there's that phase where you grow up into being an adult, but for every parent too, and I'm going to face it with my kids, there's that phase where it's like, well, you know what? I was, and I still and forever am your parent, but you're now your own being. And you have to let go of that grip of control. And it's going to be triggering for the parent too. And that's another thing, view it for the parent's eye. It's like, if she cares so much, like hanging on, she's like, I don't want to let go. Maybe even her identity is like, who am I without controlling her? Who am I without her? <gasps> and that's where, again, it's like those crucial conversations where it's like, yo, we love each other, but like, we can't live this way. This leads to resentment, it leads to hate, it leads to toxicity. And if she's not okay with it, nothing to do with you. You're saying true to yourself. That's her having to deal with her own shit. And guess what? Your parents also have to deal with their own shit. Everyone does. And you're not to blame if they get triggered by who you are or what you do. That's on them. All you can do is be you and communicate your truth. And again, a big one is, your parents should always be agreed with you and agreeing and everything should be okay. It's like, no, fuck that lie. If you being you alienates your parents, be you. Doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. If you being you pisses off your parents, still be you. Same here. Be you. Yeah. Not in a rebellious way, because then it gives them power, <laughs> but in an authentic way. Say there was no hold, how would you act? And then act that way. Be that way. Say there was no, like, say your mom's like, no longer controlling, but there's no longer any need to prove her wrong. She's like, whatever you do, okay. There's no longer mommy the enemy. Now what? And live your life from that. What if there is no enemy? And it's the difference between playing not to lose or playing in reaction versus playing to win. Living life in a proactive way. Final thing, everyone has things they went through that were unfair, that were horrible, that were terrible. If you look at your past, some worse than others, sure. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter how fucked up your life was, how fucked up your, your, your past was, it does not no matter how fucked up it was, give you an excuse to withhold love from yourself. I don't care how bad it was. You can give me the like Guinness world record of look how bad my love was. Hey, not an excuse to not love yourself. It doesn't give you the right to not love yourself. It doesn't give you anything. No matter how messed up it was, nothing is worth getting in the way of you loving yourself. No. And if there is, Dive into it, let go of it. So keep this in mind. Love yourself, grounded. What your mom thinks of you doesn't affect who you are. Let go of being triggered, acting in a reaction. And as you are right now is what? 10 out of 10. You're what? I'm 10 out of 10. One last time, tell them, you're what? I'm 10 out of 10. Give her a hand. <laughs> okay, amazing. <laughs>